pieces. Um, and then also, um, we will be taking attendance at the end of this meeting. So please be sure to wait until then so that you can get credit for coming tonight. Um, so without further ado, I would like to introduce Dr. Sheremy. He's the Assistant Dean of Admissions at LSU New Orleans School of Dentistry. Uh, we're so incredibly lucky, lucky to have him tonight. He's a wonderful speaker um, and he will be a source of knowledge for all of us. So without further ado, Dr. Sheremy, uh, you can go ahead and take over. Wonderful, thank you so much, Matthew. I appreciate the introduction. And I didn't, this is my fault. I should have made the correction. I'm now associate dean. I got a promotion this year. So how about that? Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Just one more step before I'm full dean. Watch out. Yeah, I heard you were associate dean now. Right. It's a very uh, it's an honor. I appreciated the promotion. But let's start by you know let's talk about dental school. I've heard a few of you may be interested, <clears throat> certainly uh, of applying. Let's talk about the process to get in here at um, LSU. And am I, are y'all hearing me okay? Every, all the, okay, great. Yeah. Perfect, okay. So I'll just go through this process. So I am um, Associate Dean, Dean of Admissions, Student Services and Alumni. So you get me from beginning to end um, in this process. So hopefully we'll get to be lifelong friends. Um, I don't wanna tease, I'm so sorry that I know who's going to med school now, but I don't wanna tease you too bad, but you know, I'm a teaser. I'm a jokester as my niece calls me. Um, but I want to kind of show you, you know, in 2013, where dentistry was in this U.S. News and World Report on 100 best jobs in the world. And we were quite pleased to be there at number one. And I won't bore you throughout the years. We've stayed. Don't want to brag too much. We stayed in the top five. This is based not just on um, salary, which is nice, but it's also on career flexibility and job satisfaction. So I was anxious. I'm, I'm anxious every year to find out where we are because I don't want to drop out of the top 10. Um, did I? No, we were number nine. How about that? So a lot more um, software development and a lot of statisticians, non-medical came into to the top 10 there, but we're still holding our own there. Uh, physicians, y'all are number five. Wait till next year. Wait till I uh, get the new stats. Don't get too cocky here. I want you to notice too, though, a lot of the, the specialists are also included in top 100. Um, orthodontist, oral maxillofacial surgeon, hygienist, prosthodontist, all of these specialties have to be dentists, the surgeon and the orthodontist before they're um, specialists. So we kind of, I, I, I claim a few spots here. Right. If or so worry about we are robots. going to do this worksheet. So <laughs> together, yeah, we can do together. I think we're learning chemistry. While we're going through this presentation. I wonder how you got that. So, um. okay. So, if you're worried about robots taking over your job, you're kind of in luck with dentistry, near zero probability. Um, but hopefully, you're not going to telemarketing. I don't think that's a major at UL, but uh, the robots might take over. If you're if you're into this thing, dentistry is the most swiped right job. I don't know what that means. I'm just, it's just a list I got and here we are. So I don't have to explain that to y'all young folks. Y'all know what that means. So in dentistry, of course, you're in it to hopefully to want to help people and work with them and improve their smiles. Taking them from this to this in an afternoon or a day was just life-changing for them. And they go out and they can go out and spread that joy to others in the world. That's the amazing thing. Almost instantaneous job satisfaction with your patients in this field. And I'll always tease my physician counterparts, what would you do if your patient came in and was worried about this? Of course, you'd refer them to the dentist because we can now crown those spaces or crown the teeth around the spaces and put artificial teeth in. We can also state of the art, put in implants, kind of artificial roots drilled into the bone and we can build a tooth upon that and really have your patient leaving with a prettier smile and won't be known throughout their life as gappy. They'll be known as beautiful. So we have the glamour of bonding and implants, of course. We also have the latest technology here at LSU. We don't want you going out into the real world without knowing exactly what you're getting into or the latest technology on how to treat patients. So of course we have this glamorous drilling for endo and lasers. Yeah, we'll do anything with the laser. Watch out. Um, CAD CAM technology, if you've shattered at dentist, you know this is the latest thing. I call it 
probably not fairly, but I call it the Walmart of dentistry where you're able to get a crown that same day um, if everything goes well. And you take a picture of the prep and the machine mills the crown and then you leave with a permanent restoration that, that afternoon. So um, it's a lot easier than that temporary that may or may not stay on for the four to six weeks that it takes a lab to make the crown. So technology certainly is getting um, interesting and certainly improving. Ah, I think I saw this picture already. This is my introduction picture, but it's just a reminder. Although my patient was apprehensive, as you can tell through her scared eyes, I was explaining to her that I was just checking her teeth for sealants. And it's the same thing I want to explain to y'all how to get into dental school. Don't be scared. I'm going to walk you through it. It's not that horrible. We'll get through it together. Oh, this probably isn't the most appropriate slide, but it is not as scary as Little Shop of Horrors. Um, if you haven't seen this movie, go see it. It's really, I mean, rent it or whatever y'all do, stream it. But understand, you will be a happier person if you understand it's a two to three year process. Less than 20% of applicants get accepted with their first application, their first DIT score, and their first interview. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time, a few hits to get to that sweet spot. And this is why. For this cycle, we've had, we had over 1,300 applicants for our very small 75 positions here at the school. We interviewed 122 for this cycle. Usually the 75 positions break down into 56 Louisiana for Arkansas spots are reserved because Arkansas does not have a dental school. So the state of Arkansas pays us to take four of their students and then 15 from any other state in the union. So a pretty nice diverse mix of students that we have here at the school. This I know is complicated slide, but it kind of just shows you all of the process and what I'm looking for um, in applicants and what gets my attention. So the first thing I want to kind of remind you is that it's a very short application window. We live in a hurricane zone. If um, a hurricane blows through and I have to reschedule interviews, I need time to get them rescheduled before December 1st. So that's why the official start date for access usually is in June, early June. What they've done in the last two years is have a, a soft launch opening about two weeks prior. So in mid-May, they'll open up the application process. And that way you can start putting your information in. You can't officially submit it until June 1st, but at least you can start putting things in carefully. Um, then I always say June 30th is your next important date because after June 30th, you're in competition with about 11, 1200 other people. So you want to make sure that you have your stuff in as early as possible because it is rolling admissions. The most competitive and the most complete application gets first consideration for an interview. So the cycle runs along until our deadline of September 1st. We start interviewing the first Friday in August and we run until about Halloween. After that, a committee meets and decides on suitability for the candidates. And then on December 1st, if you've been interviewed, uh, you're told if you've been accepted, uh, waitlisted or rejected. Um, and this is what gets my attention next, are your academic credentials. Um, uh, three parts of that, your GPA, your letters of evaluation and your DAT score. So right now the income in GPA is about a 365 cumulative. And if you wanna break down the sciences, it's a three five. Uh, letters of evaluation, we do prefer committee letters such as the excellent ones written um, through a UL because it's a more objective and vetted letter and it gives us a lot of information on you as an applicant. If you don't use the committee or decide not to or miss their deadlines, then you can use two basic science instructors to write your letters. Um, but well, I'm probably gonna ask you during the interview, why didn't you use your committee? Um, so you'll have to be prepared to answer that question. The other part are your DAT scores. So right now the incoming average is about a 21 on your academic average of the DAT. We recommend that number. And with no sectional score below a 19, if at all possible. This year has been, um, over the last two years have been very interesting. We've had DAT scores that have been um, considerably above average. Uh, I also interviewed a young lady this year with a DAT score of 29. The highest is a 30, I've never seen a 30, um, but she did come in with a 29. So pretty outstanding um, numbers. That's not to make you nervous, that's just to show you that it can be done. And the ways that it can be done are through these courses like DAT Bootcamp, Destroyer Achiever, Kaplan has a good review course, Chad videos and Khan Academy are helpful too. Um, so all of these little courses on the side there can help you improve your DAT score. The best thing to, to prepare for the DAT though is just to pay attention in school <laughs> and to listen to your instructors at UL because they're giving you all this information that you're gonna be tested on on that DAT. But if you wanna look at the question structure and how the, the test itself is formatted, then these are very helpful booster preparation courses. 
So consider this, let's say June 30th is your, you have everything in, you have a great GPA and a great DAT and great letters of evaluation. Then I start getting interested in your application. And I want you to come in and interview. I'll send you a supplemental application, which will verify your residency. And then about four weeks after that, you'll be invited to interview. I would not recommend you start carving your chalk on the day you get your invitation to interview. You wanna kind of start that now, just so that you can uh, get used to the procedure. And I'll, sh I'll talk more about that a little bit later on. Um, but the chalk score is an important part of this process. We wanna make sure that your hand skills are ready to go because you see your first real patient your first year here in dental school. So your hand skills have to be ready. Um, it's a 35 minute exam. I grade the chalk from zero to 10. Any score lower than a four becomes concerning, and I'll show you some examples about that. The rest of that interview time, we're going to be listening for your uh, caring, if you care for people, which is why you should be in dentistry, and then your motivation. Have you shadowed enough? Have you seen enough general dentistry? Do you know what you're getting into? So that's why your community service and your shadowing is important. You want to have at least 50 hours of high quality one-on-one -on -one human interaction for your community service. And then for your shadowing, those numbers have been reduced a little bit. They used to also be 50, but reduce that to 25. I imagine once we get out of the pandemic, it'll go back up to 50. But for now, we're just requiring 25 hours of general dentistry shadowing. That's not 25 hours in one office. That's a total of 25 hours in three to four different general dentistry offices. Whew, that's a busy slide. Oh, I want to remind you, if you applied and you get everything early June 30th and you have a great GPA and a great DAT and you don't get a supplemental request or an interview invitation, you may want to consider your letters. Your letters may be an issue. I can't tell you that the letters were less than stellar because they're confidential, but sometimes you have to go back and reapply and uh, kind of deduce that you might have to get new letter writers. They may have said things that you're just not ready for this cycle. You need a little bit more prep work. Your, um, your academic metrics need to be improved, that kind of thing. But I can't share that information with you. You're going to have to realize that that was the issue in your application. So it's a little bit of detective work, too. I didn't put that in that slide. You have to be a detective in this process. And you know what? I've learned after 15 years of doing this, you have to be a little lucky, too. I'm just so sorry. There's just some luck involved here. Um, here I am. Don't I look handsome on June 1st because I'm so fresh and so ready to read every application and every personal statement about why you love dentistry. I will not have you answer this question because I know how many people are, oh my goodness, almost 120 people in this group, but my students have said that I look like a famous movie actor. So you just ponder who that may be. As I get older and as my facial structure changes and my uh, whiskers grow, it's not as evident, but still try and remember, you know, you might want to just ponder who I look like. He has a new movie coming out. He has a new movie coming out every year. But of course, it's obvious. And it's not James Corden. I've heard James Corden. I've heard the comic book guy on Simpsons. It is obviously, of course, Tom Hanks. So Tom Hanks has this, it's hard to find an angry Tom Hanks face, but I found one. So Tom Hanks, Dr. Jeremy, isn't as happy on July 1st, because I'm wondering why you didn't put your stuff into access on June 30th. But you might have a good reason for it. Just remember the cycle happens rapidly. A lot of more people are applying after that June 30th date. Oh, look, I'm almost there. I'm growing my beard. I will be shaving this off after November, but I don't want to look like this. You don't want to have this vision in your head on September 1st when I'm just exhausted and I look like Tom Hanks in Castaway. I'm exhausted and I may love your personal statement, but I'm not sure I believe that you love dentistry that much because uh, why didn't you apply much earlier? Remember, keep that rolling emissions in mind. I'm so sorry. Some of these questions I'll go through quickly because I don't want to keep y'all later than you'll have to. I mean, for goodness sake, some of y'all are in chemistry class. So if your GPA is significantly below that 365 number that we're looking for, there are some postgrad programs that would you recommend to improve it. Um, there are one-year master's degree programs. We recommend three very um, high-level ones. One's in Mississippi College in Clinton, Mississippi. One's at Tulane University in Cell and Molecular Biology here in New Orleans. And then Shreveport, LSU Shreveport has one um, in um, healthcare. Um, so those are one, three you may want to consider. UNO is also a developing one here in New Orleans that's up and coming. I need to talk to Dr. Feldenhauer after about ULs. I don't know if they have a one-year master's program in healthcare science yet, but we'll work on that. 
this is how to get considered um, here at LSU. I'm the little guy, I'm the little pup here in the middle. The rest are my committee, and they're the ones who kind of decide your fate. It's, your, it's the check and balance that we have. I get you and I coach you and I get you to a good competitive point to get to the interview. And then my committee takes over from there and decides your suitability. So I no longer have the power after your interview, the committee does. So what we recommend is that you complete your access application, of course, uh, start it on June 1st, submit it, but then trying to get in before June 30th if you're serious about uh, consideration for that cycle. And hopefully you'll get a supplemental application and an interview request. All of this is on our website. Don't panic and don't furiously try to write all this down. It is on our website. And we have one sweet person who tries to keep this updated each year, but uh, she's done a great job. Let's talk about the process for applying. It's through an electronic application service called uh, DIA's AdSAS. Uh, most schools now participate. Actually, Texas does also participate now, but they still have their separate application process. There's a fee. Uh, but once you subscribe to the service, you can complete one single application, apply to as many dental schools as you'd like. In the past, each school had their own application process, and you can imagine how confusing and competitive and expensive that was. Although this isn't free, um, the directions are on the website. Let's talk about what it is. And this is why I want you to be very careful. We talked about the academic credentials before. I don't want you wasting money. LSU does not need your money. I want when you apply, that you're going to be competitive or plan to be competitive for that cycle. So it is an investment. It's $259 for your first designated school. Each school that you apply to after is $112. And then we have our own separate application fee of $200, which is a, I know it's a hefty investment. So the good news is after all this, all these fees are paid, you don't owe any more money until you get accepted and then you secure your deposit uh, that's applied to your tuition. But all of this is paid up front. Um, so kind of think of it that way. We just, we just get you in the beginning. Uh, what did I want to say? Oh, if your friends are applying to more than five schools, you should become very friendly with them because they obviously can afford to treat you to lunch because this is an expensive process. So find out how many they apply to. Usually people apply to five to seven schools. Keep this in mind too. The two things that can be updated in your application are your DAT scores and your letters of evaluation from your committee or from your instructor. So some people wait until all of those are in before they apply. It's going to delay your application because verification takes a while. So if you're taking practice DAT scores and doing pretty well, and if you put your information into your committee and are just waiting on the letters, that, but know that they will be coming and they always do, you should apply early before June 30th. Do not wait on those two things because that can delay your application almost beyond the point of our deadline. And that does no one any good. Let's talk about your, your requirements. This is why you're at the wonderful UL. We required 90 semester hours of academic credit. All the required courses, technically you do not need a degree to apply or matriculate, but I promise you it's been over 15 years since someone has uh, been accepted without a degree. So work toward your degree. It will be helpful. Most of the people who apply have at least an undergraduate degree. Most have masters. Most come in with PhDs or some come in with PhDs and Sorry, med school guys. Some come in with MDs who want to go into dentistry after. The majority of these academic requirements should be completed at the time of application because it makes your application more competitive. But a few, one or two might still be out. That's fine as long as you mark them as in progress in access. Courses are 12 hours of biology in their labs, eight hours of general chemistry with their labs, eight hours of organic with their labs, eight hours of physics with their labs. Nine hours of English, aren't you glad they don't have labs? Three hours of biochem and three hours of micro, which do not have the lab component for our prereqs. But if you take the lab component, that'll just make you a stronger student. So don't fret about that. Sometimes you can't get out of the lab parts. So I know it's a lot. It's worth it because it does help you in school. If you make good grades in your prereq courses, it shows the committee that you can handle our basic science curriculum, which is rather rigorous feels like this weight of the world on your shoulders. Don't mean to scare you, but this is the schedule. Do not panic. You almost need a master's degree in cartography to read it. We will teach you how to read it the first day of school. But what I want to point out to you is every little color block you see is a class that you must attend. We have mandatory attendance here at the school. So it's a rigorous program. So sorry. You do get some breaks. You get a Christmas break and you get a whole week for Mardi Gras. I know the dental school in the world has that, but I want you to notice in that last month of May, that S&P 
color is when you actually see your first life patient. So you're going to be working rather quickly in uh, early on your patients. So we're very proud of that. What else did I want to mention? Oh, what this shows you is from eight in the morning till five in the afternoon. It doesn't show you from five in the afternoon to the following eight. And that is the part of the iceberg that sunk the Titanic. Remember that? It was just a tip that stuck out. You have to use your afternoon and your evenings to get ready for the next day of dental school. Remember, we're, we're taking six years. We're taking residency and your basic undergraduate, postgrad degree, and we're compressing it into four. So you're doing your residency during your four years. So you're, you're going to eat, breathe, and sleep dentistry. Um, if you've taken 18, 21 hours as um, your maximum in undergraduate dental school is more comparable to 43 hours of actual coursework. So don't want to scare you off. I want you to know what you're getting involved with. It's a pretty rigorous curriculum because um, we're serious about your education here. In your second year, you have a little bit, little bit uh, more dentistry. And on Fridays, you're actually drilling and filling and doing soft tissue management. Um, but you still have a lot of basic science uh, courses throughout the week. By your third year, though, you're actually doing comprehensive dentistry by discipline. So you're signing up in specialty base for what your patient needs and working with the experts in those fields. Because by the fourth year, you have your own office here at the dental school with your own little name on it. So cute. You go into your office and you treat whatever your patients need. Those are run and led by team leaders who have a combined experience of well over 400, maybe even 500 years of general dentistry experience. So they're not scared. And that way you won't be scared. You also will rotate through a level one trauma center here at University Medical Center in New Orleans. Well, you will see the best and worst of life in the big easy. You will be wiring jaw shut. You will be removing bullet fragments. You'll be treating um, patients who come in in handcuffs, um, but you won't be scared once that rotation is over. And you'll certainly be prepared to handle anything that comes through your office once you graduate. This is how I evaluate my applicants. I look at academic credentials. Remember, those are your GPA, your GAT score, and your letters of evaluation, your manual dexterity through the chalk carving and through the PAT of the DAT. People skills through your interview, I'm going to, and through your personal statement and through your letters of evaluation, personal attributes through your interview, and then your motivation to become a dentist. If you're the child of a dentist, I'm glad for you. Perhaps that's given you some advantage, but there are no legacy points here at LSU. And I want you to shadow outside of your family office so that you know that there are different ways to um, do dentistry. Oh, that DAT, I'm so sorry. It is a standardized test. It's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's a bear of an exam. It's valuable to us because it gives us a good test of your basic knowledge and it's a better comparator than just your GPA because not all schools, of course, grade the same. It also tests your ability to take standardized tests, which is important because you will have a board exam to take as a dentist if you want to practice dentistry. My advice is to take it no later than May after your junior year, if possible. This isn't an ideal situation. This is after your chemistries, including organic and their labs are complete because it's a huge organic section in the DAT, on the DAT. And of course, as just a reminder, we recommended 21 academic average and no single score below 19. This is a recommendation. It's not a hard and fast rule. We look at everything holistically, but if you want to get my attention and get it early, have that good GPA of a 365 or better and a nice 21 in your DAT and we'll be in a nice situation. You sign up to take the DAT at these prometric testing centers. Um, uh, you can get it through the ADA.org. The rules on the DAT is you can take it three times unimpeded with three months in between those attempts. After though, from the fourth time on, you need a school's permission to take the exam again and a whole year between that last attempt. So just be careful when you're on that third time, you have to be very strategic on when you take that DAT again. So plan ahead. Don't take it though, just for fun. Make sure you take many practice DATs. You don't want to take it until you're prepared to reach your target score because uh, you only have those three tries before it gets complicated. Uh, okay, hopefully everyone here is being nice to their professors because you want those recommendations. Like I said, they can make or break your application. I'm just want everyone to be as prepared as possible. I often get the question, what are we looking for besides academic credentials? And if everyone had the 4.0 in the third year on the DAT, we're looking for someone we want to teach for the next four years. And someone we know who's going to go out in the world and not scare people. Dentistry is scary enough. We want them to go out and be kind and nurturing and good 
stewards of the community, that's what we're looking for in our applicants. So a lot of that information comes through through your letters. So if you want to be nice, don't be fake nice, but just be nice, nice to your uh, committee and to your people who are writing your letters. We want to know that we're admitting someone who is a nice person. Manual dexterity, very important. As you know, the PAT gives us a little information on that DAT, but then we'll supplement that with our unique chalk carving. It used to be that the chalk carving was the PAT portion of the DAT. Um, we kept it as a supplement, even after they took it away from the DAT. Those of you who have taken the DAT, this might put you into PTSD. I'm so sorry. It is a little shocking, but these are the sample questions for the PAT. Some folding questions, interesting. But let's talk about what's even more interesting is our chalk carving. So PAT will answer the question if your brain can see it. Our chalk carving will answer the question if you can translate what your brain sees into your hands, which wouldn't you agree is rather important for dentistry. This is the kit that you will get should we carve in person. If not, you will be responsible and I'll send all of this to you um, if you're carving through the mail, which we had to do these last two years because of COVID. This is that triple sized piece of chalk that you'll get through Amazon or through Granger and a number seven buffalo knife, which will become your best friend. I always joke that, um, oh, here's mine, if y'all can see it, um, because I always keep it handy. If ever I'm in an accident and survive, but lose a limb, please tell the doctor to attach my buffalo knife to one of my fingers or to my arm, because I use it for everything, not just chalk carving. I use it for grouting my bathtub, opening mail. It's just a handy instrument. You will use it for chalk carving, though. The instructions on how to carve the chalk are on our website. This is an actual picture of them carving chalk. It's a 35 minute exam. This is what it is, it's kind of strange, but we want you to round off one into a dome. we we'll score off another point on the other end and then you have a rectangular cut out in the middle. Easy peasy. If you uh, QR scan this code, it'll bring you to the website, but you can just go on our website and search Dr. Ireland's video. He will carve the chalk with you. I would recommend that you loop that video a few times while you're practicing. The first six chalks are supposed to be awful, do not panic. Usually by the 10th one, it becomes really, really interesting and fun. And I want you to continue carving after that. I am grading the chalk from zero to 10 in each of the areas of smoothness, sharpness, symmetry, and accuracy. And then I come up with a composite number, an average. Ready to see some nice chalk and some not so nice chalk? This is a nine, pretty nice chalk. Might've been closer to a 10, but can you see that little chip just on the edge of that box? Probably happened right at the end of the chalk carving, but still a very excellent piece of chalk. Nice hand skills there. Also nice 8.5, we call this one a great one. Not as much definition as that nine, but still pretty darn, darn good. Okay, good. But you see that we're losing definition in the point and look how scratchy and kind of uneven that cutout is, but you get the overall point. Ooh, that's not much of a Superdome, but. Um, we still know that this is what you call a teachable chalk, but um, at least you get the concept. We're starting to get to what we call uh, alligator nosing, where you're scooping the point of that chalk into these curves, and that's a no-no. You want to um, always keep that edge a little bit straighter, not have any light shine through it. So it's still an okay chalk. <sighs> not so much here. A lot of alligator nosing and a lot of excess of carving. And what is this? Is that Mount Kilimanjaro? Mount Everest, that's not the Superdome. So you want to be careful. That's a lot of overcarving. I always tease that this would be a great endodontist because they just drilled to the end of the tooth, but uh, not good for chalk carving. This one's a little scary because I don't know what was going on. There was a transposition of measurements and that's not, I don't know, that's not a point. Nice dome, but still scary. But not as scary. This was an actual chalk carve. Uh, and I think the 0 0.5 was actually a gift. I guess they got some kind of a point. They started making the cutout. We're not sure yet what instrument they used to carve. We kind of teased. They might've thought they had to carve it with their teeth and kind of chewed on the chalk. But look, at least you know if you can carve better than this, you'll, you'll probably do okay, right? All right. This is what I like to call my favorite student and he is because he never gave up. He had to apply more than once. He applied actually four times on his fourth attempt he studied for his DAT on an offshore oil rig, hit his sweet spot score and was able to come in, graduated near the top of his class and finished his surgery residency two years ago um, in Texas. So wonderful student. I'm glad he never gave up. His patients loved him. We loved him. My current favorite student is this one who just graduated this semester. Um, and I'm showing his picture because I want to remind you when we ask for your supplemental application, 
we're going to want a professional picture submitted. This was the picture, picture he submitted, and that's fine. He's in his little scrubs. He was assisting, um, dental assisting, so he took his picture there. If you had your choice, I would probably wear a tie and jacket, but scrubs are fine. What we do not want to see, though, is his previous life picture of surfer dude, because he loves to surf. But of course, he didn't submit this picture. But my committee members just trawl you during a committee meeting, and they found this picture of the student. Do not submit pictures like this, please, during your supplemental. Remember, those pictures are blown up very large. You want the committee to have a nice impression of you um, when they're making their decisions of whether or not you're suitable for LSU. There's no crying in baseball, another great Tom Hanks reference. Um, so I'm gonna slap my face on that and say there's no crying in this application process. So you have to be nice and brave and big and mature because it is rigorous. It takes a lot of energy and money, I get it. You just, you have to be ready to go. In dentistry, we wanna, we wanna make sure that you're, you have people skills, that's important. Um, the factors that we use are your ability to communicate during our, your interview. The fact that you hopefully enjoy human interaction because you will be working on people and the methods that we use are your letters of evaluation through your committee and the actual interview on interview day. Dentistry might seem glamorous right now, maybe even while you're shadowing you're seeing some really cool things and it is overall a great profession, but it is also a stressful profession so even in your best day you're going to um, have a, a little bit of stress to deal with so we want to make sure that you can handle that that's all part of our process. If you have questions about your application, certainly do not let others email those questions for you. Make sure you're mature and you start and you email them yourself because I get fooled a few times where it's actually mom or dad emailing me about your application and that doesn't bode well for you. We wanna make sure that you're mature and responsible during this process. Ah, just a reminder. I wish we were, I still, look, you know what? Some days I still wish I had a diaper. I'm just saying, as you get older, <laughs> But you're you all y'all are young. Y'all don't need diapers anymore. Y'all are big kids now. When you get to my age, you might want to put one in your car. Okay, so just remember the rule of maturity applies to post-interview admissions decisions. So it's not real good if mom or dad or your cousin start harassing admissions officers about your application. It is your life and your career. Make sure that you're the one in control of it. Uh oh, you don't want Tom angry when mom and dad call. And now I can't get rid of the Tom Hanks reference because now I have cards in my office with the Tom Hanks. And he's just getting more popular. I don't know if y'all saw his interview on, uh, was it Jimmy Kimmel? One of those. Anyway, he's just, he keeps going on and on. Your motivation, that's an important factor. We want to make sure that you shadow properly. We don't have the great TV shows like the med school people do. We don't have Grey's Anatomy yet. So you have to shadow and do a lot of shadow work in offices so that you know what you're getting into. I'm gonna go through this quickly, but this is really good advice. I want you to remember if you can to apply in June, remember before June 30th if possible, have a plan and follow it, earn your degree. We appreciate that you get your undergraduate degree. If you have to choose your major, and these are for those who haven't already, although I can't imagine, we have a biological science preference only because we have a biology-based curriculum and it's easier to schedule higher level biology courses if you're a biology major. Although you can major in whatever you like as long as your prereqs are done and done with a nice GPA. Join your pre-professional, everyone here has, hopefully, or they wouldn't have access to the Zoom. I'm gonna ask the treasurer later if everyone's paid their dues, hopefully they have. So take that DAT early, but only when you're prepared to reach your target score. Do not take it just for fun. Observe your general dentist, three to four is who, who, the number we recommend. We do like leadership roles and community outreach, extracurricular activities such as Mission of Mercy. Hopefully those will come back online once this pandemic has uh, abated. So keep those community service projects in mind. You can communicate with me and you must through email because all admissions advice should be written and retrievable. So you can try and call me, you won't get through. Miss Mindy might answer the phone. Anyway, we don't want any miscommunication. Make sure that you write me so that I can reply and so that we both have record of that. And if you want, you can send me a smiley face because my heart sometimes hurts if it takes me two hours to reply to you on a complicated answer, I never hear from you again. That's just my ego. If you're serious about your application, make sure you submit a completed one and, and a competitive one if possible by that first Monday in June, no later than June 3rd, if you can help. But I know there are extenuating circumstances. Just keep that date in mind. If you apply and are admitted as an out-of-state resident, you stay an out-of-state resident. 
you know, you don't convert to Louisiana. So make sure you understand that the, the state that you put in your access application is the state that you will be admitted as. So make sure that information is accurate. Our tuition fees increase annually. However, I wanna say, I might have to remove this from the slide because it hasn't increased in the last five years. And in fact, this year it has actually gone down. So woohoo, can you believe that? We're actually decreasing tuition. Read our website, please. I'm, I'm so interested, flabbergasted, disappointed when the information is on our website and you don't read it. And then I have to kind of, I don't like to fuss, but I have to kind of fuss you because I'm like, yeah, it's right. It's on the front page of the website. So please do me a favor. I know, look, y'all are probably tired of reading because y'all are studying all the time, but you have to, through this process, read our website and understand this process. So you are responsible for the completeness of your application. Do not ask me if your application is complete. I will direct you back to your AdSAS application. The beautiful thing about AdSAS is you should check, you can and should check on your application every day. Watch studentdoctor.net. I know y'all love that website, but the information on there is not always accurate. So make sure you get a confirmation through me. Oh, just call everyone doctor. Um, if they're not a doctor, they may or may not correct you, but if they are a doctor and you call anyone, Mr. or Mrs. in this process, they don't really like that. So just call everyone doctor, you'll be great. Watch your junk spam folders because a lot of invitations and supplemental application requests get thrown into there and you, I never hear back from you. So during this process, you have to watch your junk and spam folders. And just watch, you know, social media can be uh, interesting. My committee is, they should be in the detective business because they find interesting things. So just be careful what y'all post. We wanna make sure that you're ethical and kind and caring. And when we find evidence to the contrary, even before admissions decisions go out, it's just, you put in all this effort for nothing. Again, just be careful of that supplemental. You may have had a great time on your beach vacation, but I don't need to see that yet. You can show me after you get admitted. Just keep that picture professional for the application. Okay, this is my fussy slide. Let me fuss a little bit. This is what I run into every year. Please try to remember, only submit your application if your GPA is competitive. Remember what those numbers are. If it's not competitive, remember your GAT score has to be higher than that 21 to make it competitive. That's your calibration. So if your GPA is not at that 365 level, then your DAT should be higher than the 21. Um, you should only submit two if your DAT score is competitive or if you're taking practice DATs and your practice DAT scores are competitive. So just pe keep that in mind. Don't email me asking why you didn't get an interview or a supplemental application request. Don't make me have to tell you that it was because of your GPA or your DAT. Make sure you read the website and figure those things out for yourself. I just like to stay kind. I like to stay the good cop. I don't like to be the bad cop. Look at all the good cops here. This is our white coat ceremony. This is where uh, Dr. Grimman, our former dean, um, presided over these nice young professionals who are go out, going out into this world. So this is what we want in our applicants and in our students. Let's talk a little bit about the interview since I won't be able to meet with y'all in person today. I wanna kind of give y'all some information on what is involved here. They are granted on a competitive basis. I try to be fair to applicants and fair to my committee. I don't waste anyone's time. And I don't invite anyone to interview who I don't think is gonna be a great student. Oh, look at this. This is actually 122 interviews. We have exactly 121 participants. So uh, just imagine as many people who are on this call are as many people as we interview on average each cycle for our 75 positions. It is rolling admissions, which means that the more competitive and complete application submitted earliest gets preference over this process. So apply early if you can. The interview itself runs 15 to 30 minutes. The dress is business, actually it's business professional, not business casual. So you wanna have a little jacket and a suit on. So you want, just wanna, even on the Zoom call, we want you to be as professional as possible. The review of chalk score and hand skills, I'm gonna review your chalk score and ask you about other hand skills that you might have. And remember, I'm listening if you care for people and I wanna know your motivation for dentistry. So be prepared to answer that. There are open-ended ethics scenarios where I'll, set up a situation and you'll give me your opinion on it. Um, and then I review your academic credentials and your prerequisite courses if you still have a few out. Also remember our admissions decisions are not predetermined. In other words, no one gets accepted or rejected until everyone has interviewed. So just know that these are not predetermined. Some people came in um, hungover because they thought it was already 
decided it is not. Do not come to the interview hungover. These are kind of helpful hints. Arrive on time or even early. That's great. Be yourself and sincere. Know your motivation for dentistry. Know your audience. If you're answering questions and the interviewers are not jiving, you might want to change your tactic. Know that some luck, no matter how good you are, is involved in this process. Try not to be late. Do not lie. Don't be arrogant. But at the other end of that, don't be a wallflower. You kind of have to help us remember who you are. Don't act bored and please don't fall asleep because this is a picture, of course, Tom Hanks, but someone actually did fall asleep during an interview um, and it was not good for them. Just pay attention, fake it, it's just one day. But we also run background checks. This is different now. In If you all apply for next cycle, you won't have to disclose a felony or misdemeanor in your access application because of the check the box laws. So, but you still, I'm sorry, we still run a certified background check once you're accepted. So um, uh, be good. Um, don't do anything crazy. If you did do something crazy, please let me know. So I'm not surprised when I get your background check. Um, so that's just my word of advice. It is very much like boot camp for dental school. It's a four-year commitment. You're in class 30 to 40 hours per week. It's a lockstep process. In other words, you don't sign up for courses. We sign up for you. You take the same courses with everyone in school throughout your four years here. We want you to become a healthcare provider as well as a dentist. Since you're not here in person, let me just show you a picture of our auditoriums. Really nice. Well done. I used to be proud of these sim labs. Huh. Wait till you see our sim labs now. You thought This is an artist's rendering, but that's what they look like. So if those, for those of you who have been to our prudent days, you know that's pretty accurate. So it's very uh, Star Trek enterprising. Community service is not just something we want you to do in your application. We want you to continue it here once you are a student. So we have many, many projects of community service, such as Osanam Inn, which is an interprofessional education clinic for a homeless men's shelter. Mission of Mercy, we participate in those. Give kids a smile, tooth bus, SNDA. We're not all study. We have a little bit of fun here too. Obviously this was before pandemic. We have GIFs, we have end of school parties. Delta Sigma Delta is our dental fraternity. Each class has social chairs and they organize social events. But we also have research. You see the balance we have? We have a summer research program, AEDR and ACP, organized dentistry through ASDA. And if you want to do more after you graduate, we have not just dentistry, hygiene, and lab technology at the undergraduate level. We have postgrad education, ortho, OMFS, perio, pedo, endodontics, prosthodontics, general practice, hospital dentistry for one or two years. Other specialties that we don't have yet, but I want are public health, pathology, radiology, and anesthesiology. So those hopefully are in the works. We have these other programs here at the school, but I won't bore you with that. If you need more information on it, just let me know. Pre-Dent 101 is our main workshop that takes place on the last Saturday of every January this year, which is January 29th. So you'll get more information. I'll send it through Dr. Felgenhauer for you to get more information on this workshop. Not sure yet if it's gonna be Zoomed or in person, that is yet to be decided. But even after that major workshop, I do try and have monthly mini workshops where you can Zoom with me and we'll answer more questions. You'll see this presentation or at least a version of it and we get to um, talk more about applications. So that'll be posted on our website and how to register. That's after Predent 101. How did I do, Matthew, President Matthew on time, it is 6.15. You did wonderful. Oh. It's so great. Thank so, you. <laughs> um, if anyone has any questions for Dr. Jeremy, uh, you can type it in the chat and I can read it out loud or you can just speak. There was one earlier. Um, I'm not sure who it is because it's yes. just a user, but he's he or she said, so if you get rejected the first time you apply for dental school, what do you do? Just wait for the next year or that, does that person have to retake the debt or anything? It all depends on what's deficient in their application. So good question. Each one's a little different. If your DAT score was just on that border, you may want to take the time of that year to improve it. If it was about your interview style, I'll be honest with you. If it's if it's your interview, if it's your personality, I'm so sorry. That's the hardest thing to change, but I'll tell you, you didn't interview well. Um, if it's your hand skills, if it's your chalk, I will counsel you on what needs to be improved. And usually that second time is the magic time because we have improved what was lacking and hopefully um, have addressed the committee's concerns. After a second interview though, if we can't correct the committee's concerns, usually 
we talk about other options for you. I mean, it, may be, it may not be dentistry or it may not be dentistry here at LSU. So I don't try and lead you on. I will not lead you through a 10 year torture where you apply, I, just not fair for you. You need to go on with your life. So first time we do our best, we have to strategize again on the second time, we re-strategize. And then after a third time, usually you get in or um, you find another path. Awesome, any other questions, anyone? Let's see, Lance says, would it be beneficial to shadow orthodontist or periodontist? Could we count that towards our hours when we apply? That's a great question. And we do want you to get, we want you to dabble in the specialties if you'd like, especially if you're interested in it as a postgrad program. But the majority of your shadowing hours should be in general dentistry. And that's for two main reasons. One is you're going to have to be the best general dentist first before you even specialize. Because if you think admissions is competitive at this level, it is 10 times more competitive at the postgraduate level. Um, and then I want you to have as much variety of business models as possible. You can shadow in a factory where you see 100 patients a day or in a spa boutique where you just see one or two, probably three or four, maybe 10. Um, so all those models work. Um, I want you to know that you can design your life and your office any way that you want. And then Chloe has some questions. I think you answered that. Caroline asks, can you tour LSU Dental School like you can do for undergrad schools? That is a great question. I get that every day. And usually I would say yes. I have a team of ambassadors who are our students here who this is what they do and they're chomping at the bit to tour students again. However, huh, we have such strict still since we're a healthcare facility, masks and vaccination protocol that we don't yet, we can't yet open the school up for public visitors yet. Plus we got a hit during Ida. All of our walls are down <laughs> in the breezeways. We're covered in plastic. It's just not a pretty school right now. Hopefully it'll get better, um, but I'm hoping after that January 29th date, we might be able to start in-person tours again, but for now, unfortunately not. If you email me though, in my signature, I do have a tour of the school with a drone, a drone tour, which I know it's not the same, but it's something. Also, if you go through YouTube and just put LSU Dental School tour, it'll bring up that drone um, virtual tour. I know it's not like the real thing, but. I'm going to, I hope I don't embarrass this next person. I just want to say hello to Jackson because I've been emailing him back and forth all the time. It's nice to see you, Jackson. Um, I feel like I've raised most of you. That's just what, you know, it's just my, that's what I do. I feel like. All right, take a left right here. What? Oh, no question. Any others? Did we, did we address all the questions? Uh, Dr. Do. I'm just curious. Um, you said you don't know yet if the dental conference is going to be in person or online in January, or it's for sure on Zoom. Right, the Pre-Dent 101, I will know in the next three weeks. Okay. okay. So I'm meeting with LSU sponsors, it, their undergrad sponsors it, and they we haven't made that decision yet. So it will be on our website um, and the registration information. So I know if I ask you right now, what would you prefer? I'm sure y'all would prefer in person. And I do like in person. Of course, you get to tour the school, get to meet everyone in person. I mean, that's what, um, <laughs> Maddie, thank you, in person, I know. Um, it's just, I would be devastated if someone got COVID during one of an in-person event here because we haven't had one yet that could be traced to the school. So we just have a lot to balance here. Other questions have come through? Uh, Jason in the chat asks, separate from the shadowing hours, are there any requirements for experience in patient care? Not, not specifically, no. We'd rather you do the shadowing and get as much experience you can with the shadowing. Um, you know, mission of mercies, um, mission trips are, are helpful when we talk about that during the interview, but it's not necessary. Those are just extra, extra things. Anything that, that can show you how you can change a person's life, um, not, not especially just through dentistry, but through any kind of event um, is helpful. So, but right now it's just a shadowing that is required. We have other questions. Should I just press my chat button or Matthew, you're gonna continue? Let's see, I can okay. just keep going. <laughs> um, Christine asks, are curriculum 
vitae is also considered during the application process i don't know if i said that right the cvs your yes your, yeah uh, if, if you have not <laughs> applied yet through access let me tell you it puts a normal cv to shame you're going to be putting your life in this application process so a supplemental cv or resume is not necessary you're going to i'm going to know your life i'm going to know how your mama makes her rue and i'm going to know your blood type probably through your application so it's very thorough i don't need extra information and if i did um i'll ask you Let's see. Uh, maddie asks what are some alternative routes for a gap year besides masters or grad school are there certain jobs that would help self-improve that's a great question and i always say anything in the service industry is helpful so uh i i waited tables um i was a bartender um, people who have worked in banks and deal with the public, anything that prepares you, you know, dentistry, we'll teach you the dentistry part. What we can't teach you is the psychology part and the communication part. So any help you get on the outside is helpful. So it doesn't have to be in dentistry, although the golden, I guess the golden job is a dental assisting job that you can, you know, in, in that gap here, but any job in the service industry is helpful. So there's no, no shame in a service industry game. Job. Good job. What else do we have? Anything else? I have a question for you, Dr. Sherman. Okay, sure. Okay, so you, so I, uh, I believe I can safely assume that you've been, uh, and I list you for quite a while. I believe you said you've, you've been there for a number of years. Um, what is it about LSU that you love so much? So, like, is it like the students? Is it the atmosphere of the school? Like, what is it that, what is it, that, what is it that you find so special about LSU? That's a good and great question. I appreciate it. Besides Star Wars. <laughs> which I appreciate too. Um, we don't have a lot of Star Wars here, but you can decorate your, your cubicle in pediatric dentistry any way you want. So keep that in mind. It is a combination of our early clinical experience and um, the family environment. I have not seen that replicated anywhere else in any other dental school. And I've been to every one of them in the country. So I don't know if that can be forced. I don't know how we're so lucky to have that. I know that I work hard to make sure you have an early clinical experience. And I know that you have it in the spring of your first year. I actually want it in the fall of your first year. So I'm working on that too. So it's just, it's just a night. Everything that we hear from our students, those who have been through the years with us always come back and say, it's a kind, nurturing environment. It's not intimidating. It does us no good to scare you into learning dentistry. That doesn't help you. We've got to give you the space to learn dentistry so you can go out and help others. So that's, that's our, that's a, priority that shines through all of our faculty. So I hope that answered your question. It does. Thank you so much, Dr. Sherman. You're welcome. You're welcome. What else? On the workshop, the workshops at the end of January, correct? Uh, when would the sign up be for that? Good question. So yeah, our major workshop is at the end of January. That registration information will probably be posted right before the holiday break. So after my meeting um, in the next couple of weeks, we'll make sure we, we link up. It's LSU Pre-Dent Society's website, and I'll link that um, registration up. So it'll be on our, on our website or on our LSU's Pre-Dent website. As soon as it comes up, like I'm going to be paying attention to that. Like I'll post it to where y'all all have that because, I mean, it's, it's awesome. And if you're interested, y'all need to go to it. Thank you so much, Brooklyn. Someone else in the chat asked, um, so if I want to be a dentist, you have to drill in someone's mouth at some point. Or is there a route where you don't have to? I know ortho doesn't, but my fear is not getting into ortho, then I'm stuck with dentistry. Well, that's an interesting question. So uh, yes, you have to be a general dentist before you practice any specialty. And not only do you have to be a general dentist, you have to be an excellent general dentist because ortho only takes the top 5% in a graduating class. So yeah, you have to be pretty skilled at drilling teeth. Um, I'm so sorry, you can't skip general dentistry to go into a specialty. Um, I guess in other countries you can, though I would be scared. So you have to learn all about general dentistry first. So it's a great question. I never thought of it that way, but no, you have to be a great general dentist. You have to 
get over your fear of drilling one teeth. It's not just drilling. I mean, it's crowns and soft tissue management and, you know, all, all of this. And I've, I've said this, I kind of alluded to it before. I can teach you carpentry of teeth. What I can't teach you is what you have to do every day. And that's educating your patients on how to prevent future disease. I mean, if you're not educating your patient in that chair and you're just fixing their cavities, but not telling them why they got it or how to prevent it in the future, you're doing them a huge disservice. So hopefully you enjoy the teaching aspect because that's what you'll be doing. You have a captive audience. They can't really move <laughs> or talk. You can educate them while they're in your chair and that's what you should be doing. And drilling, don't be scared. Don't worry, that first time, we'll get it over with first. You'll be drilling. <laughs> you'll be so, you won't be scared of drilling after your first year under Dr. Winkler, I promise you. Let's see, um, Emily asked, does it help to work at a dental office during your undergraduate? It helps. I mean, it's certainly not a waste of effort. It's just a, I call it the unicorn job where it's not always easy to get. Um, so your shadowing, of course, doesn't have to be a paid uh, event. I want you to shadow, preferably in a non-paid e environment. But certainly you can talk about, it. it's not required in your application, but we'll talk about it perhaps when you interview, but it's not a necessary component. Any other questions? Well, I appreciate y'all time. I know how busy everyone is and thank y'all for listening to me and, and giving me the opportunity to speak with y'all and uh, hope to see y'all in the future. Thank you again so much Dr. share me. It's always a pleasure. And I know that you gave our members so much wonderful and helpful information. So we just really appreciate you coming and giving your time to us. Well, I appreciate that. And thank you for your kindness. And Dr. Felgenhauer, I'll be in touch. I hope to see you in person soon. You're muted, Doc. It's that darn mute button, y'all. He's still muted. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Pope What's everybody. really good about uh, Dr. Sherman is He's almost immediate. Uh, we're both pretty early morning. Well, you guys know.